Hello celestial stars, welcome back. I am doing a session today and someone who also I felt has wanted to come forward to tell her story and that is Lucy Mack Smith. She is the mother of Joseph Smith. I find it very interesting that both Joseph Smith, the Mormon prophet's parents, want to come forward and talk. I think it quite funny uh, when I was channeling uh, Joseph Smith Sr. and he was talking about tithing and my voice got really funny and I, I did read later that he had quite the sense of humor also so I think he was making me do that just to make me be silly so hopefully Lucy Max Smith is a little bit calmer um, and I feel that Lucy Max Smith is really a good woman. I felt she went through a lot in her life and um, I just asked her to come forward and say the words that she wishes to say. I thank you for taking this time to meet with me. I've been wanting to speak for there's many things I want to say and many things I want you to hear. I think I shall like to talk about the beginning of our family. I was desperately in love with Joseph Smith Sr. He was a wonderful man, high spirited, and you know, he made me laugh. We would laugh and giggle and just have the best time. And that's why I chose to marry him, because he was so much fun, and me, he made me feel good about myself. I had a little bit harder childhood and very stern parents, and it was nice to have fun. After we married, I did learn a few things about my husband, as of course many women who marry find things about the man that they marry which could be quite different than the man that you thought he was. Joseph Smith Sr. in your words was an alcoholic from a very young age. He had a problem. He was a drunk. He drank until he was drunk. He spent most of our money on alcohol. It was quite hard but I lived with it because he was my husband and there was nothing else to do. So he went from job to job. The money he would make, he would go out and spend quickly on alcohol, on drink. Sometimes I would hide the money from him. I would hide it outside. I would hide it under the floorboards. I would hide it because I started becoming with children and we were hungry and starving because he would spend all our money. We were so poor. We were so poor. I believe he told you that we did eat grass. There's times we would, actually I, I don't like to admit this, but we would steal people's food from their farms because we were very hungry. Sometimes I think they knew we did that and they just let us because they knew we were hungry. And sometimes Good Christian people would leave baskets of bread and food on our doorstep because everybody knew about my husband. So there are many children that I bore. I bore several and as a mother I lost several children. Some were stillbirths, some died in infancy but some did live and grow strong. I loved my children dearly. I had several outstanding children and as they grew they supported me and they loved me. As the boys grew I would have them follow their father and take care of him when he would go and drink in town. 
They would bring him home and put him to bed. He slept in separate rooms. All when he wasn't with drink, he was such a good man. He was so jovial and a good father. Now let me go to the time where Joseph Smith, my son, and Oliver Cowdery and my husband and the Whitmer family were all together in the creation of the Book of Mormon. Oliver Cowdery had a manuscript and they all worked on it day and night. It was such a fantastic story and we made it into a religious story almost like a scripture and they said they were going to tell the world that they had found these golden plates these eyeglasses these sw the sword and breastplates and they were going to tell the world they found these things as they searched for treasure and they would translate these golden plates and this is what they wrote called the Book of Mormon. So you see it is time for my husband and I to clear our name because this has been deemed as Bible, as Scripture, as the Word of God. Now I want you to know that I'm a God-fearing woman and yes I did know that the Book of Mormon was written by all these men. But I want you to know that I knew only good could come out of it. Once the story was published and we spread word of how it came to be which was not true, people flocked to it. It was a time where people wanted to believe such spiritual things and we knew that and when I say we, my husband and I, I call we, even though I was home most of the time not involved in the writings at all. I just knew of how the Book of Mormon became, became, became. So it's time to clear the air for those that are listening that do believe that this book was written by several people who might have been inspired by God but I don't think so I want you to know that these words are true they're from my heart I want to clear our name because I do feel ashamed that I live this life of being a, a mother of a prophet even though as the Book of Mormon came out and people worshipped my son and they followed him I felt he was inspired by God in the words he said you could just feel it you could feel the spirit fall upon him Some of you may not believe that, but I do. I want to. I want to believe my son 
somehow became chosen to lead people. I enjoyed the people of the church. I enjoyed the organization of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I so enjoyed the community of them. But there are some things I did have a hard time with. When my son, after his father's death, announced that there was to be marriages of men to many women. How I felt sorry for Emma. How my heart just leaped out of my chest when I heard that because my first thought was for Emma. Poor Emma. Oh, poor Emma. It's such a sad, it was such a sad day. I saw how when her husband announced this, what you call polygamy, how it crushed her. She had her head down low. I do believe she went into a deep depression at that time. Because in a small community that we lived in, in Nauvoo, people talk. Emma heard what her husband was doing. In fact, there's so many women that were actually disgusted with this new revelation by the prophet, my son, that they actually told Emma the events of the marriage to other women and actually to the naughty events of the night. She knew exactly what her husband and others were doing. It was devastating. She grew, actually, to loathe him. She hated him. You will never hear that from anybody else but from me because I was there. I saw how this revelation of polygamy destroyed Emma Smith. There was time she would come home from her activities and meetings in what was called then Relief Society, as it is called now, that she organized and we all helped and maintained to take care of women and to support women. And she would come into her home and there would be a bride of Joseph Smith coming out of his room I cannot imagine how this should, could hurt, wound, and anger a wife. Joseph was not tactful in his marriages to other women and to his, what you would call sexual romps with other women. He would hide it from several, but we all knew. You cannot hide these things in a small community, and especially in the temple. He had a private room in the temple where he would solidify the marriage to the women. Joseph did have other children which you will not know because others will not tell you. Brigham Young saw to that all these things that were a little bit tainted or would taint Mormonism he, would de he destroyed. But I know the truth. I know the truth. 
Joseph had at our count at least 14 other children besides the ones he had with Emma Smith. Many of these children he did not know of because most of these women were married to their husbands. Joseph Smith really did not care if they were his children because that's not why he called this prophecy into place. It was a prophecy of selfishness, a prophecy for his own gratifications, which breaks my heart. But you should know the truth, as only a mother could tell. I want you to know that it is true that Emma did try to poison her husband more than once. And actually, in the poison, she was not trying to kill him, as you may hear from Brigham Young, who is an awful man. He was a horrible man to us, but I will not talk of this at this time. But yes, Emma did try to poison Joseph just to make him extremely, extremely ill. I did not agree with this, but I understood it as a wife, as a woman. I want you to know the hardest day of my life was the day that my sons were killed. Two sons died in one day. Joseph Smith, Jr., the prophet of Mormonism, and Hiram. They were always together. They were two peas in a pod. And I lost my beloved sons. That was the hardest thing in my life to endure. The second hardest thing was when they shut down Nauvoo and the Mormons had to leave and they trekked to Salt Lake City with Brigham Young. I did not go. I could have gone. But I refused to go because I was not treated any better than an other parishioners. I was the mother of the prophet of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and I was treated no different than any other parishioner as was Emma. Brigham Young had, disdain, had a disdain for us and he did not want us there or the legacy of Joseph Smith's children there because he took over the church to control it and bring it to how he wanted it. That's why they moved to a desolate land so he could control it. He controlled it and the people. The things that I heard coming out of Salt Lake City in the early days were horrendous. The murders, the stealing, oh, how Joseph would have not wanted it that way. I didn't know how to stop it. So now in my elderly years, I live to be a good ripe age and I just wanted to come forward to tell you that I loved my son, I loved Emma, I loved her children, I loved my children, but I feel Mormonism stopped when my son died. Mormonism was developed by my husband, by my son, and by a few others. It was ours. It was not Brigham Young's. It was not the other prophets. It was ours. And they took it from us. They actually bought us out. Many of you do not know that. But we were bought out. We were given 
homes, carriages, land, money, to basically not go to Salt Lake City. They felt we would cause trouble. You have a religion, or a type of religion, called Scientology. Now this is the same premise as Mormonism in the way that when my son died, Brigham took over. He was not voted in. I do not believe God wanted him to be there. He, as a crook, took it over. Just like your Scientology Miscavige took over after the leader was dead. It is the same. It is really the same. And the family, look at the family of Scientology, the originals, and what happened to them. I do want people of this dispensation to come to understanding that the Mormon Church is not the same as when it was delivered in my day. It has been changed and manipulated. Please understand that you are worshipping something that was devised by man. It was not inspired by God. I do believe God has his finger in some of the things of the Mormon faith, but no. And as my husband and I are trying to clear our names, I was always a God-fearing person. I always prayed, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is my Savior and my Redeemer. All those that are of Mormonism, pray to God, stop reading the Book of Mormon. Read the Bible only. Pray to God only. Well, I have said all I needed to say. I may come back and talk to you more, but I can't express enough how after Joseph died that everything changed. I don't know how to explain it to you, but it became dark. I would hear the darkness that came out of Salt Lake City and it made me terribly sad. If you are thinking of becoming a Mormon, please rethink that. Please think of Jesus Christ and go to a church that only teaches from the scripture of the Bible. That is scripture. The Book of Mormon is not scripture. It's a story. It is a story. And it's not meant to have you follow it as a guideline in your life. The Doctrine and Covenants was completely written by Joseph Smith and others, and the Pearl of Great Price. So please come to understand, do not take these as scripture. Do not worship them. I am going to take my leave now. This is Lucy Mac Smith, the mother of the Prophet Joseph Smith, of the Book of Mormon, of Mormonism, which we developed. It was the Smith's family development, which I am proud of, but I am not proud of it now. Amen.